I'm always about the exchange of energy. When you are talking with somebody or when you're working with someone, there's this exchange of energy where you feel more, more happier, more better after you've talked with somebody or you've done something. And maybe what, what our society has done to us is when we come in and we're asking people to register to vote and why they don't leave feeling better. We have, we're not engaging authentically enough, intentionally enough. Um, I've done a lot of different voter um, engagement projects and I'm a firm believer that in any community, especially those that are the most disenfranchised, they need like a dozen experiences. We need to be able to know each other by name. We need to know why, what, again, what motivates them, what they care about, right? We can't knock on someone's door, ask them to vote, register to vote. If I don't know a single thing about them and I don't know why they would want to vote, it becomes very clear to me that that's not sticky, especially for our communities of color and um, our communities are the most disenfranchised. What is your advice on uh, getting our parents to see the beauty in the work that we do? You know, the sense of um, the power in the work that we do and that even though we are kids, it's important that we be a part of this process of changing society. Yeah, well, I, I'm guessing that your parents are secretly super impressed with you and super proud of you. I'm guessing that's their secret. But remember, they need to hold control and individual power over your life so that they can make sure you stay on that right track. I mean, there is an element of that. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I think there's also this other thing where, as a parent, you know, you're looking out and you have other priorities. Your priorities are to make money and to make sure there's insurance and get the car, or all these other priorities. And so they've kind of forgotten that creativity and this work that you're in, this journey that you're on is, is just as important to their future too. I know for, for myself though that um, we all have different learning styles. Some are more visual, I'm super visual, right? And some are more um, verbal and some are more written. And our parents are going to be the same way. So trying to figure out how to connect with them um, is difficult. If you're, you know, very musical and they're not, it just becomes sort of what looks like um, a segregation in need or fulfillment. Um, it's just a different style. And I'm guessing that you'll have very good relationships with your parents later. Um, but this is part of probably human nature too, having you feel itchy to leave the tent, go, go out and do something. And every generation thinks that the next generation is a little bit more uh, uncertain or not as smart or right. Like that's human nature. I find that humans are actually, we're not that smart actually. And we don't see out very far, but we're really creative and we're really good at um, thinking that uh, we have a new bright idea. You mentioned something about ego, um, and that's what we all notice sometimes is a lot of leaders in this world, they lead based off their ego rather than their spirit, rather than for the betterment of others, for others, rather than leading with compassion and love and forgiveness and gentleness, they lead primarily with their ego. So what advice can you give us um, leaders on how not to lead with our ego, but lead with our hearts and our spirits? Well, I guess for me, it goes back to being very intentional about what it is that you're leading with. What, why, you know, always have a why to the what. If you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, um, then it can be very difficult to lead um, on those values. Um, I remember once I asked, can you lead with the, through the lens of love? And that person actually said no, and they were a social worker. <laughs> so I spent like the next 10 years like, wait a minute, that, that's not true, and I'm going to defy that. So I am, I, I'm a firm believer you can still lead through the lens of love, but I'm, but you can still scream and you can still be on the pavement and you can still make people mad and you can still, right, say everything you want to say or be quiet and still be doing all of those things at once. We face racism sometimes in our communities um, or racist people and what's your advice on how we can deal with that challenge? That's a tough one, right? I mean, racism is, uh, it's all around us. Some people are more racist than others. I think it's um, standing up for each other, right? Um, we know that number of hate crimes is up. And some can say it's because now we're reporting it. But the reality is, is that people feel more emboldened right now to do that. Um, and to me, it's about setting the tone. It's about the culture. It's about surrounding yourself by community that doesn't tolerate that. Um, 
that's probably going to be one of the first places that you will stand up and have to stand up for somebody and actually use your voice and say, that's not right. That's not okay. We need to talk to somebody to get, you know, right to get help. It shouldn't be on you because some, right. You can't be a victim. You can't get injured because then you can't help anybody. So you've got to make sure that you seek support uh, and get, you know, principals, teachers, whoever to help make the issue. Right. Um, be the fairness monitor. How can we be able to get out of our comfort zones um, and to push ourselves to be a better version of ourselves? Well, um, practice, I guess. Just keep practicing, putting yourself in places to practice. I have to admit, I don't like to karaoke because I, I, I'm very sensitive about my singing. So I guess I'm telling myself I should probably hit the karaoke bar when it's time, but um, it really is. And it'll come with age too. It'll come with experience and a sense of knowledge about the topic. It'll come with being a big fish in a little sea or right. And that's being um, in your little community and, and you're, you know, you have a lot of interactions with that community. So it becomes more familiar. And then when you become, right, the president of your college, then speaking in front of thousands will be no problem. It just, it's just create like exercising. I think it's just um, exercising your muscles until you feel like you you can do what it is that you want. Um, and again, surround yourself by people that you trust and that you care because they're going to give you, they're going to refill your juju bucket. They're going to make you feel good. They're going to tell you how it is. And that's, I think that's our biggest worry, right? We go out there. I, I can't help but think of the movie, right? Where Will Ferrell's like telling people, hey, come on out. We're all streaking. And he's the only one streaking. I don't know about you, but I do not want to be the only one streaking, right? <laughs> I, I just always think about that because like, that's how I feel. That's how I see life. I don't want to be the only one streaking. I'll be there with you, but I do not want to be alone. I think that will help you then find your voice and feel comfortable.